Hello there, this is Retro Spirits Gaiden, and this is Dynamite Teddy on the Sega Mega Drive. Here's the Sega logo, and here's the treasure logo. Spinny treasure box, sort of alpha blended treasure box. And here's the titular Dynamite Heady with his crazy head action. Uh, this is a platform game. Um, I think this might be Treasure's second game in the Mega Drive, potentially. And uh, the first being Gunstar Heroes, which was a Stone Cold classic uh, shoot -em -up, platform shoot 'em up. This is a plat just a straight platform game. And you've got a puppets character who can change his head, and when he changes his head. He gets different moves. It's a bit like Kid Chameleon, actually. It's almost like a Japanese version of Kid Chameleon. Now, Kid Chameleon, it's not one of my favourite games. I remember playing it back in the day, wasn't that impressed. Dynamite Heady, also played this back in the day, wasn't that impressed. I've recently bought it for about 20 English pounds off of an auction site. This is the PAL version. We've got a giant red robot here who is uh, grabbing puppets and putting them in a basket. He's glowing green eyes. Crazy. Uh, we have some sort of buffoons with um, massive kind of quiffs. Um, I'm not sure they're called buffoons. I don't know what's happening here. There seems to be some sort of pipe. And there are characters moving between pipes. Hmm. Like centurions looking on without any empathy. Oh, they're just whacking him in a bin. It's just dumped him in a bin. That's highly uh, irregular. What's well, a robot bin? Oh, he's bust out the side. They're going to escape. That background's crazy. It's got like scrolling in multiple directions. So this being a treasure game, there's lots of uh, visual whiz bangery, uh, but also uh, plenty of colour. And some animation here. Being chased by a giant robot, that's all in order. It's exactly what you want from a treasure game. Giant robots in a weirdly scrolling environment. Now this, unusually for a treasure game, is pretty damn cheap. And I think it's because it's not actually a very good game. <laughs> uh, having played it for extensively for some time, I've come to the conclusion that I don't like this game very much. Um, there's a couple of things. Well, one of them is the central premise and the character is particularly unlikable. I don't like the visual style here and the head action, if I can call it that, is quite finicky. And there's a few stages where, um, I'm, well, it's quite early on actually, you kind of grab it by a robot, a cat robot thing. And um, your head is very limited in its range, as you can see. And um, it keeps your arm's length, and it's just a really annoying sequence. And then the game just gets more annoying as it goes along. We do have some, like I said, quite cool Mega Drive visual effects, like this background scrolling ones. That's all cool, isn't it? Looking on Japanese painting things and muscly guys pulling it on. It's like a stage show. The whole the whole game is set up like it's a a stage show featuring puppets. And we've got an angry cat here that's coughing up blue fur balls. There's also a puppet, as you can see from these arms and legs. They're not actual arms and legs, they are just sticks, like breadsticks. We've got breadsticks for limbs. I'd be angry if I had breadsticks for limbs. Um, so yeah, I can see why you'd be pissed off. Um, secret points. Yay, I've got a secret point. Yay. See, um, that's, so the character's quite creepy. I was kind of, I kind of shut up there because I wanted to hear that bit of speech. That bit of speech is a creepy bit of speech. So yeah, the head action grabbing onto platforms is 
fairly annoying, like my head went through that ball there. And it's like that all the way through, it's just slightly painful. And I think this is why people don't like it. Also, you lose the character against the background quite a bit. It's, um, it's much like there's too much colour and noise and distraction going on. Uh, as a follow-up to Gunstar Heroes, it's not a brilliant one. And yeah, just just for the gameplay, really. Uh, we do have lots of graphical tricks in here. We've got uh, there's lots of stages with um, there's like a, a nebulous style scrolling tower. If you remember nebulous in the uh, 8 bit uh, consoles. Oh, we've got a bonus stage as well. The bonus stage is pretty annoying, so you have to score hoops with basketballs, and uh, it's just irritating. It does give you like a um, like if you're successful, it gives you a number to remember, and um, I'm not quite sure what that's for. I don't think I've ever completed this game. Um, I get bored about after about 25 minutes. It doesn't seem to. Or maybe I'd do it with save state states at what in in my next life. I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to play this game again for like, any length of time. But it doesn't appear that you can continue. It kind of just does a game over, from what I remember. And um, yeah, the game structure is slightly irritating from that perspective. Uh, but like I said, there's lots of graphical effects that Treasure and Rome for. Yeah. But the gameplay just isn't up to their usual standard, I don't think. This might be a B team effort. But this is just tedious, this knocking the stuff into hoops. It's just not any fun. There might be a technique to this, I don't know, but it's, it's bloody irritating to play. Uh, which is not what you want from your video games, is it? So, I had played this back in the day, I was aware of it, and I thought, I'll give it another try. And um kind of wish I hadn't bothered. Because it's it's just a bit meh. Uh, Kid Comedian might be a better game than this, I don't know. I my memory of that is so hazy. I just remember that it's got the same conceit where you can sway and sort of um change your head and it gives you different powers. I do remember Kid Comedian's graphics being a bit shite. Even back in the day. The music on this game is not even up to Treasure's normal standards. It's got the same sound library that Treasure always uses in the middle of but um, yeah, the tunes just aren't very good. Because it's zany, isn't it? It's got like zany tunes. It's a Gunstar Hero sound effect right there. Um, so you can change your head by hitting that little guy there with a the signpost. Um, there's uh, quite a few different heads. And some of them are more fun than others. There's one that turns you into like a kind of like a um, reclining, lazy metal, metal thing, which is just weird. It's, it's got like a speed thing associated with it. You, at any time, if you've got a head that you don't like, you can press the A button, I believe, and it will return your normal head to you. Uh, what's your opinion on the uh, main character? He's just incredibly unlikable. Ugly. Weirdly discombobulated. I can like this, this enemy here. This kind of robot. This sort of Jomon robot thing. It's kind of groovy. Heady himself is just... It's just horrible. It's just not appealing. Kill the sausage man. Oh, we've got a spiky head now. Spiky head embeds itself into walls, so you can climb up areas. I mean, it's all very clever, but just tedious, really. I don't know. Have I... Like, Gunstar Heroes was so great. Um, I remember back in the day being a bit disappointed by this. I mean, it's got some cool stuff in it. This snake is... Like, it's really, really well done. Like, it's... Visual effects wise, awesome. Just the game, yeah. There's quite a lot of flickering in this game as well, which um, is fairly annoying. 
Yeah. I'm not saying they didn't try on this, but they just they haven't smashed it. The same way Gunstar Heroes has smashed it. Some windows there with people in them like flexing. It's almost like Chowiniki. This dragon looks cool though, yeah? Yeah? You like him now, aren't you? It's taking forever to kill. I can't. No, okay. As I just said, I can't kill it. I killed it. Um, I actively avoid trying to change my head in this game because um, I just find it irritating. And I think that's the main problem. The game's just sort of irritating. But it does have amazing visual effects in it, like this giant dog. You can't argue with this. Okay, it's crazy, man. Crazy times. This music uh, must be public domain because it's in Parodius as well. There's a hammer style head here. Uh, must be a well known piece of classical music. Okay. This uh, face mask pulls his time by looks of it. Which makes this boss fight much easier. I think I'm supposed to collect these gold things. Yeah, I missed most of them. Really. A bit like um, collecting teacups in cotton. Yeah, so, I mean, it's 20 quid. If you like platform games and you don't mind fiddly controls, it might be for you. If you think the graphics look cool, uh, that's groovy. If you're enjoying the sound, that's also groovy. It's not... I'm not saying it's a rubbish game. It's just not going to star heroes levels of quality. So... See that character, that voice there is creepy. Um, so yeah, it's just um, not Treasure's best game. It's not bad. It's not brilliant. Say it's got some highly irritating sections in it, which I might not be playing correctly, which is my fault, I guess, but um, doesn't make it fun. So here's another level with an interesting graphical effect in it, but it makes the gameplay irritating. I'm sure this is highly technical um, and difficult to pull off. Um, locking Heady into 2D space and then letting him move in uh, multiple di dimensions based on how the background's faffing about. But uh, it doesn't make it any more fun. So, yeah. Cool effects, annoying gameplay. <laughs> Which is basically Dynamite Heady in a nutshell. The first time you do this section with this helicopter Burke, it's fucking irritating because it's got like depth in it and it's really hard to judge the depth. And they don't just send one at you, it's not like you're locked in here for one, there's like three of them in a row. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you haven't played it before. This section could last a long time and it's boring. Very boring. There's a creepy cat in the background who keeps looking at me. He wants to devour my liver. So I don't recommend Dynamite Eddie. It's okay. Don't pay over the odds for it. The Japanese version is super expensive. Uh, the PAL version is about 20 quid. Alright then. True. Yeah. <laughs>